Thank you. So yeah, hi everyone. How is everyone doing? I will this yeah. I will do a live demo. So this is the setup uh, <laughs> we need. So yeah, I, the um, the title for this demo is automating ownership context and impact assessment in security findings. And I think that ownership context and impact are three key security concepts when working with security findings or vulnerability management. Um, thank you for the opportunity to show my project here. I have a few slides. I will try to go as fast as possible and then I will show how it works. So just briefly about me, a security engineer during the last 10 to 15 years working in different networking, infrastructure and cloud uh, related roles. Uh, during the last years also focus on security tooling and automation and I've been contributing to some open source uh, projects. You can find all that in GitHub, in my GitHub. So um, automation in security and especially in vulnerability management is key. It helps us uh, saving time but also with what is really important that is um, not the amount of findings we have, it's the time it takes to detect them and fix them. In cloud, the most common security scanners that are available are CSPMs, misconfiguration scanners, and software vulnerability scanners. Um, these tools help us uh, discovering hundreds of issues that will not be possible manually, good. Um, in general, they do it fast, good. But they base their rule set based on standards, so they provide, in general, a generic definition of each finding and their severities. They focus on single findings, not on resources, so they don't provide any type of correlation between the findings that, these, uh, that they detect. They don't, provide, um, they don't provide us enough context about the affected resources, and at the end this could mean a lot of extra work, noise, and probably false positives. So when there is a security finding, we first need to understand, like this one, about a uh, Open, an open security group, we first need to understand who owns that, uh, that um, affected resource, so we know who should I report it to, uh, who created. Then we need to understand the context of it, like what it's doing, how it's associated with other resources, if there are other security findings for the same resource. And finally, with all that information, we can define the real impact of the finding. Like for this security finding about the, an open security group, is the security group is not attached or it's not even in use, why will we need to report it as a critical finding? So what information is available programmatically that we can use to automate this process? Tagging, if it's used consistently, it can provide us a lot of information about the affected resource, maybe the service, the owner, the environment, a description, a name, logs or CloudTrail in AWS. Um, could help us understand who created the affected resource, how, when, from where. If we isolate services or environments using different AWS accounts, having information about the affected AWS account could provide us a lot of also contextual information, uh, maybe also the security contacts for that, for that account. And then we have the configuration from, from the affected resource itself, that it depends on its type, like for an EC2 instance we will have certain type of configuration, for a Lambda function we will have other type of configurations. And finally we have all the resources that are somehow connected or associated with the affected resource. This could be at the network layer, like the VPC where the resource is running, the subnets, the roads, at the security layer, like maybe a security group attached to the affected resource, maybe a network ECL, at the access layer, like IAM roles, policies, maybe boundaries. This tool in, in MetaHub, um, you can get all this information together from your affected resources in the form of, they are called meta outputs. So we have meta tags for tagging, we have meta trails for logs, we have meta account for information about the account, and finally we have meta checks where we check the configuration itself from the affected resource and all their associations. Then we have some properties or questions that we can answer about the affected resources that are independently, independent from the uh, affected resource type. Um, like if it's public, if it's unrestricted, if it's encrypted. Um, the challenge with these questions is how to answer them, not only based on the affected resource itself, but also based on everything that is connected to these resources. So as an example, uh, for an EC2 instance with a public IP in a public subnet, 
this EC2 instance will be only effectively public if there is a security group attached to it that allows traffic. Another example for an S3 bucket with an unrestricted, fully unrestricted bucket policy, the bucket will only be effectively unrestricted if, for example, there's no public log access uh, enabled for the, for the bucket or for the account. Again, uh, the goal of this tool is to provide you the answer to these questions in a standardized way so you can easily um, define the real impact of the, of the security findings. One more on the demo. Uh, so MetaHub is a framework for fetching this data and answering questions about your resources that maybe can help you uh, with the, um, uh, the automation of the ownership uh, assignment, the context, uh, context enrichment and the impact definition for these security findings while you continue using the scanners that you are using. So how this works, MetaHub reads your security findings from other tools uh, any tool that supports generating outputs in ISFF format could be used to integrate with MetaHub, or you can read directly from AWS, AWS Security Hub API if you are using Security Hub. Then it will connect to every affected resource and execute in, in each affected account and execute these meta options uh, in those uh, resources. Every time there's an association, uh, another resource that is associated with the affected resource, it will also execute the meta options in those resources as well. With all this information together, it will generate outputs that you can use for integrating with other tooling, for example, with an alerting system. Um, it will generate some uh, reports like HTML reports that you can customize based on what you want to see there. You can also apply filters on top of all this data. Um, using these filters, you can identify issues that only make sense in your context. And if you are using Security Hub, you can also execute actions directly in Security Hub, like, for example, updating the workflow statuses of all your findings together, or uh, adding the context directly in the findings in the Security Hub. So let's see how it works. So I have um, an AWS account with a few resources and security hub enabled. So security hub will be the source of my security findings. Uh, let's first explore the options that we have in MetaHub. So first we have options for defining how to read from, security, from the source. If we want to use security hub as source, we have options for defining the role to assume in that account or maybe the profile. We have options for defining the account ID and the region where Security Hub uh, is running. Then we can apply filters that will be, ap will be applied in directly in the API. This is useful if we want to uh, get only one finding or a specific severity or a specific resource type, region, AWS account ID. Um, we can also define these filters as YAML files that we can keep them in, our, in the repository and reuse them for uh, following executions. And then we have options for defining uh, if we want to um, read, read the findings from other sources, we can define this, uh, the path to those files, and we can even combine more than one source together. For example, if we want to read from, if we are using Prowler as uh, the source for our security findings, we can combi combine Prowler plus uh, AWS Security Hub, and MetaHub will generate a unified unify output from all your sources together. Then we have options for defining if we want to do something directly in Security Hub, like updating the workflow statuses of the findings or uh, adding the information back in Security Hub. We have the options for enabling or disabling these meta options, like meta checks, meta tags, meta trails. We also have options for defining filters on top of these, um, all of these outputs. And we have also an option for defining a role to assume in the affected accounts. Because if we are aggregating findings in one master security account, we will need a role to assume in the accounts where the resources actually are. And then we can define the outputs that we want to get from the tool. By default, all outputs are enabled. We have six different outputs. Four of them are JSON. One is HTML, and the other one is CSV. Um, let's see how it works. I will execute MetaHub. Um, without any extra option for now. By default, it will try to read from Security Hub. I have my credentials in uh, my environment. So every time you run MetaHub, 
uh, it will show you the options that it's using for that execution. In my case, by default, it's trying to read from Security Hub. The information about the account is in my environment. By default, if I don't specify filters, it will use the default Security Hub filters that are record state equal active and workflow status equal new. And no meta options are enabled, and all the outputs are uh, enabled by default. So the first step for MetaHub is reading from the source. In this case, Security Hub. So in this case, it found 80 findings in Security Hub, and then it started analyzing finding by finding and generating the, the configured outputs. So we see that here in the result section, we have again 80 findings. This is because I didn't apply any filter on top of the um, of this query. And we also see that the total amount of affected resources for this query is only 24. This could be already an interesting metric because for each of our queries, we can easily understand how many resources are affected by the findings that we are getting from any, any scanner. Then we have some simple statistics like findings by severities, by resource type, and finally the outputs uh, that the tool generated. I will start by opening the first output. It's called JSON short. Um, what we see here is that we have a list of affected resources that we are getting from Security Hub. MetaHub will always show the resources using their REN. Um, and this applies for the main resource and for any association. So if I expand any of these uh, affected resources, we have a section findings where we will see all the findings that are affecting this resource together. So we can group all the findings that are related under the affected resource. And then we have some uh, simple fields that describe the, um, the affected resource. If I want to see more information about the findings, I can use the full output that, again, is the same. We have all the findings together that are affecting the same resource. But this time, I can expand any of the findings and get more information, like the severity, where it's coming from, the standard. Um, we also have a statistic output where we basically generate statistics by every available field uh, that we get from the findings. For example, we know how many um, findings we have for each resource ID, for each resource type, region, if we are using more than one, uh, for every account. And um, finally, the last um, um, JSON output is an inventory that's basically a list of affected resources using their REM. So let's start by enabling some of the meta options. I will start by enabling meta tags. Meta trails and uh, meta account. You can decide the ones you need. You can combine them, use them all together. Again, we see the options that we are passing to the tool. We see now that we have some meta options enabled. First step, reading from Security Hub, 80 findings again, and it start analyzing these findings. This time, it will take a, maybe a little bit longer because it's actually doing something on each affected resource. Let's see if the connection helps me. Uh, this will be enough. I will abort here the hard way. I will open the first uh, output again. So now, let's see, this is a security group. So under the affected resource, we will see that we have this new section meta tags with all the tags that are applied to this uh, resource. We also have a section meta trails where, we, where MetaHub is trying to identify critical events in CloudTrail in the affected resource that correspond to this affected resource. So for this, uh, for this one that is a security group, we are looking for the creation event that is create security group and the authorized security group ingress rule. We get the username who, who execute this action, the, the event time and, and the event ID that we can use to search directly in, crowd, in CloudTrail if that's what we want. And then we have information about the affected account. So like the alias and the contacts that are defined there. For if I, for another, uh, this is for example uh, an IAM, uh, IAM user. So for MetaTrace we are looking for a different event. In this case is the create user. So we can easily know who, uh, who and when created this affected resource. If I open again the um, statistic output, We'll see that now also we have statistics by these uh, meta options. So in my case, that I'm using this tag key owner with different values. Um, we are counting the findings by each of these values. I'm also using environment. So we have statistics by envir environment. Um, also by, for example, the, the output of the meta account uh, option. Some of these um, meta options can be filtered. 
So for example, if I want to filter only uh, resources that are tagged in a certain way, for example, they are tagged with this uh, tag key owner and the value security, I can run that query. We'll see now that we have these options um, in the first section of the execution. Again, first reading from the source, we start analyzing the findings. And what we will see now is that the results are now, uh, the, the amount of the findings is different because now we are applying a filter on top of these uh, findings. In this case, we ended up with five findings uh, um, that are affecting only two resources. So if I open the first output again, we will see that these are the resources that are uh, tagged in this uh, way. Um, we have two findings here, um, three findings in the other one. So I can even combine these filters with filters applied directly in Security Hub API. So if I want to get only from Security Hub uh, findings that are high severity, I can use the severity label uh, filter. Again, first step, reading from the source. This time we only found 16 findings in Security Hub because we are applying this filter directly in the API. And we ended up with only two findings affected, affecting one resource. This means that this is the only resource in my environment uh, tagged as owner equal security, uh, which is affected by high severity findings. Let's see how the last meta option work, meta checks. I will run once more. Again, reading from the source. This could be uh, the output of any other security scanner. Start analyzing finding by finding. Now, this time we will have a, this meta check section under each affected resource. So I will open the first output again. Um, this one is the, the one I find uh, most interesting. So let's, I have here, for example, a security group affected by three security findings. Um, we have this new section, meta checks. Meta checks will start trying to answer questions about your affected resources that can help you define the impact of your security findings. In this case, we see that this um, security group is not associated with any network interface, neither EC2 instance, managed services, but we see that this um, it has a unrestricted ingress rule, so we get exactly the rule that is unrestricted from this resource. Um, then we start seeing the association. So this security group is associated with a VPC, so we drill down into that VPC and we execute meta options in that resource as well. So we start getting information about the associations. In this case, we get some uh, configurations from this resource, like the CIDR that is using. We know that is the default one. And we drill down once more to understand the associations that associated with this associated resource. Um, and finally, we try to answer the, these impact questions that will help us uh, defining the real impact of the security findings. In this case, we know that it's not public, it's not default, and it's not attached. Let's find one, uh, another example, maybe the same uh, resource type, like this one. This is another security group. We have three findings. Um, this time we see that this security group is associated with network interface, with some EC2 instances, with something that has an IP that is public. And again, it has uh, unrestricted um, rules. We get exactly a rule. In this case, it's uh, uh, port 22 TCP. And again, we have the, some associations. And then we can answer the impact question if it's public, uh, this time true, based on the information that we are uh, getting from, from the resource. But let's find, find one. More interesting, this is uh, an EC2 instance. So I have an EC2 instance here, some findings like uh, public IP, uh, not using system manager. So 
again, we first get some configuration from the affected resource, and then we start analyzing the, associ the associations again. In this case, this instance is associated with an, I an IM role. So again, we drill down into this resource, and we execute meta options there. And based on the options we are executing, uh, we can start answering other questions. We see that this role is also associated with IAM policies. So we drill down once more into these IAM policies and we check each of the policies. Um, these policies are not unrestricted. The other one is also not unrestricted. So then we know that this role is not unrestricted. And if we go up in the output, we will see that this instance is not unrestricted. But for this instance, it's also associated with security groups. So we check those security groups. Um, in this case, we see that this security group is, uh, it has an ingress rule uh, unrestricted, that is the 22 TCP uh, port. So we know that this security group is public. So then we know that this instance is effectively public. And this is, this is, based, this is based on the affected resource configuration itself, but also with this association, the, with information, uh, information about the associated resources. We, are, we also do this for, for example, EBS that are attached with the instance. We know that it's, attached, it's associated with an EBS that is, in this case, not encrypted. So then we know that the instance is not encrypted. Um, we have, again, the VPCs and the subnets. So we drill down into the subnet. We get the road table of these subnets. And for this road table, we see that it has a road to an internet gateway. So we know that this um, subnet is actually public because the road is uh, in the default road. So meta checks can also, uh, also support filters. Uh, so you, if you want, for example, to get all, the, all your affected resources uh, that are effectively public, you can run uh, meta hub with meta checks enabled, and you can apply a filter here using any of the available um, meta checks. For example, I can say, OK, give me all the uh, affected resources that are effectively public, or the other way around, that are not effectively public. We can use any available meta check. If we have an option, is list meta checks. So we have different meta, che meta checks for, every, for some of the resource types that are supported. Um, other ways of analyzing this information, uh, we can also use the HTML output. We'll open this. Uh, let me do zoom out. So here, what we have is basically the list of findings that we were seeing before. Um, we can see this finding by finding, but we can also see this group. So same idea as before all the findings that affect the same resource under the, under, under the affected resource. And what we will see here now is that we are also adding to this report the output of every meta check. In this case, we, ra we, we run um, meta hub only with meta checks enabled. But if we do it with also meta tags, we will have also here the tags. So we can start playing here with uh, filters. So if you want to see only resources that are not uh, encrypted but, and they are attached, we can, co we can combine filters here and get better insights on what we have. We can define which uh, columns to enable or disable. We can sort by this uh, information. And then we can export this information again to different formats that we can use to um, create, a, yeah, to, to report more, uh, exactly what, what we need. Um, one more way of using this tool, uh, MetaHub can run in a Lambda. The code uh, for deploying that Lambda is provided as part of the tool using Terraform. So if you deploy, um, if you deploy MetaHub in a Lambda, then you can connect the Lambda with any supported service. One option is connect if you are using Security Hub, uh, relying on the custom actions of Security Hub. I have an example here. This is my test account. So if I filter here, so I see less findings. So what I have in this account is the Lambda uh, already deployed. And I configure a custom, um, a security hub custom actions. And when you do this, you can select one or more findings, go to actions, and execute MetaHub from here. This will trigger the Lambda with the information of the findings that you are selecting. And 
the Lambda will then update these findings. I think this is from, yeah. So this will update these findings and it will add to the finding uh, all the information that we have from this uh, meta option. In this case, I'm running the Lambda only with meta checks and meta tags enabled. So I have now all the information here under uh, the affected resource directly in Security Hub. This is useful if you, want to, if you want to stay in the console, you can apply filters here. So for example, if I want to see only the findings that are not attached, we can apply a filter directly here in Security Hub, or we can use this information as well for generating custom insights. For example, I have an insight here for showing all my resources that are effectively public. And this is based on the information that we are um, using to enrich those findings back. So, yeah, this is everything I wanted to show. The code is available in GitHub. Um, I will be around if you have any questions or you want to connect.